All right, second video today. Sorry about the background noise. Somebody's chopping some trees down or something outside. Um, I've been working on these last week and this one um, this week. Well, last week too, I actually had this week. These are the ankles. Um, these two that are primered are the left and right ankles and the one that's hasn't been primered yet is the center foot ankle. These again are the Mark III design. Um, I put first coat of filler and then a first coat of primer. Um, obviously you can see right there they still need more filler so I've got some um, I have sanded this you can kind of see where you know I've gone through down to the plastic in some areas so now I need to take areas like you can see right there with the light some areas that need some more filler and put some more filler and do more primer but at least I've got a, a start on these um, something I think I've showed in another video but I'm not positive that's one of my main sticking points of do I really want to reprint it because it uses a ton of filament are these ankles um, when you print these on the print bed you do not want to print them like this uh, Michael Badley recently put out a video that talks about 3D printed parts and strength orientation in fill and walls, which one of the main takeaways is, um, think of it like wood grain. So this is the ankle. You do not want your printer to be printing it in this orientation because that means it will be really weak right there and can snap off because this is supporting a lot of the weight of the droid kind of like this and then that makes the part where my thumb is really susceptible to snapping if there's a print lines that are going in this direction so there's a couple files there's a file where it's like this with support material underneath here and support material that prints in here and then there's another with no support material or did it have support material here? I think it has no support material. No, well, shit, I can't remember. Um, what I'm trying to get to is, this one printed really nice, but it was the second one I did. I printed it in this orientation here, and I think, I think I used the version that does not have any support, and I manually made support in this area. Honestly can't remember if I had to make support in this area or not. This might be an angle where it doesn't need support material. Honestly can't remember. But I printed it like that. This one I used the version that's made to print like this. That has built in support material in here. And built in support material under here. And my support material failed. Now I haven't had that happen before. You can see here. That's not straight across. So there's a support block that prints in here and goes up to the top and then the printer is supposed to print across the support material and that should be straight and it's not. And that's an ankle and that's a support piece and that should not look like that. I am a little worried about that but the amount of filament and time it takes to print this plus my printer, my large uh, Tebow Tornado printer hasn't been doing all that well with the last few prints that I did for R2-D2 with quality. That reprinting another one of these in this orientation, I just, yeah, I just didn't really want to do it. So I am going to go with this. And this is this is the part that makes me most nervous on my build. What I'm going to do is I am going to put this onto the leg and then I plan on filling that with epoxy. So the gap between where the leg goes in and that bowing, filling that with epoxy. I figure epoxy might be better than filling it with two-part body filler. Two-part body filler might have more of a tendency to crack, whereas the epoxy is a little bit softer. 
I think it should be okay. I think it should be fine. Hopefully it will be. There'll be so much glue in there that if it breaks, I'll probably have to reprint the whole leg, which is really going to suck. But I think it's going to be all right. But I, I, I'm not sure why it happened, what was going on with my printer. It just didn't like that support piece, and it hasn't had that issue really before or since. So thought I'd show that. It is something that I probably should reprint and fix, but I'm going to go with it. I don't plan on really running my droid all that much, moving it around, to be honest. So I think I'm going to be fine fingers crossed. This is the center ankle. Um, this one it prints as a two piece. Um, the outer ankles are one piece. So this one again you don't want to print in this orientation so that the grain is going like this. So this one is made where each half prints lying down flat on the bed and then those angles there are ones that the printer can print. It can handle that angle overhang. And then you'll see there are bolts holding it together. And then there's a bolt, you can see that head of right there, holding the top together. So this is epoxied together and then a bolt in the top and two bolts inside holding these two pieces together to give it plenty of strength. Um, the four bolts you can see in the very bottom is where it bolts up uh, to the center leg support piece under the skirt. And then the four bolts you can see inside are used in conjunction with these slots to hold the uh, ankle cylinders in place. Um, my bolt was a bit long. It stuck out past flush just a bit, and I didn't want that. Uh, my plan was after it was glued to undo the bolt and put a shorter one in, a couple millimeters shorter. But uh, yeah, it's kind of epoxied in there as well as being screwed in there, so I didn't want to mess with it. Um, it's it's nice and strong in there now, so I took, again, a Dremel uh, with a sanding drum and carefully ground away until it was not uh, sticking up higher than the plastic, and then I put the two-part body filler in there. Um, this also, I use two-part body filler just like I did with the left and right legs. Um, around around it and over the top of it. Sanded that all down and then just yesterday, um, well, day before yesterday, I put the Bondo glazing putty on top because I could still feel areas that after I sanded the two-part Bondo, like this right here, that still needed work. And then sanded that down, still have areas that need work but this is actually ready to be primed. And then it'll be kind of like these where it'll get its first coat of primer like these, and then I'll sand that first coat of primer and then I'll be able to see the areas that need additional filler, which I can tell right now is here and some here and probably some up here. This was the roughest area, this curve. You can kind of see the the white coming through, that's the plastic, and then the filler is the red, so that's that's how many areas were, were low, anywhere there's all that red filling it. So that's going to need some more work to get smooth, but it's, it's a good start. Um, yeah, so some more work. Um, I should be, I should be working on the body, but I'm just, I'm so you know, worried about my painting. I painted the horseshoes. They're not in this video right now. I ended up the exact same problem I had with my battery boxes. One of the horseshoes because I was hanging them and I had to crouch down to print the underside and uh, paint the underside, sorry. And I ended up not getting enough paints. There's a little bit of gray primer showing through. 
Um, and also I ended up with some drips. Uh, really not happy about it. It's looking like I might end up just sanding all of the stuff that I printed white. Not sanding the paint off, just maybe starting with 400 grit and then maybe 600 grit. And then either putting another coat of white on or actually ending, ending up doing clear coat. Either way, it, I'm not going to have enough time this year to do that. I could maybe get them sanded and, and ready to paint, but I don't think I'm going to have enough time. It is now the last day of August. Um, we still do have some 70 degree temperature days coming up, but um, yeah, I'm really worried I'm not going to get the body printed either, but I, um, like my last video working on the utility arms that's something that I really need to do before I get that thing ready for paint and paint and I'm sure I'm gonna get runs when I paint it so the idea of sanding it after I paint it is it probably makes the most sense and really it'll just make it a satin white it, you know if I'm if I'm doing like 400 grit 600 grit you're not gonna see like heavy sanding lines or anything so it's just something I'm, I'm probably going to have to deal with. So the goal of my stretch, double stretch, triple stretch goal of actually getting R2, the body, and the legs, and the feet together so he can stand on his own three legs, and then I can just work on the rest of the parts, is not going to happen. I could do it, but I'm going to have to take it apart to do the clear coat or the sanding of the white parts or whatever. So we'll, we'll see if I, if I bother to go that far. But still, as I was trying to figure out what to do with um, the utility arms and the fact that I, I work, um, I had some time where I decided to get step away from the body for a bit. And since these have been glued for these have been glued for a long time, it's like, okay, I've already I've started work on the other ankles. I might as well get this one too. So maybe, by some miracle, you know, if I if I end up with more time than I thought, more better weather than I thought, maybe I can get my, you know, get him on his on his feet. I might as well start the finish work on these since they've been glued together forever. And so that's I'm start that's why I'm starting to work on these, even though my main focus should be um, the body. So. Uh, if I was to do that, I also do need the ankle bracelets. Um, before these go onto the legs, there is a piece that covers up this top area that gets painted silver. So that slides onto the leg, and then this ankle slides onto the leg, or glued onto the leg. And then everything else on the leg, um, like these parts here, gets gets glued on or bolted on or magnets on so the leg the um, ankle bracelet piece and the ankles need to be done if I'm going to uh, have a leg framework ready that I can then attach to the hubs and the shoulder units slide into the body and have him actually standing on two legs and then this just needs the skirt which has bolts in it and the skirt support piece that gets bolted to the skirt and then this gets bolted to it although if you look at those four bolts in there I'm not sure if you can put the ankle cylinders on the center leg when it's bolted up to the frame or not to be honest but it's not that big of a deal because you can see there's also the slots in there those are for the M4 square nuts. So these bolts that hold this up into the center leg support, they're not like permanently in there, glued in there. They're actually bolted. So I could just bolt it to hold it in place if I wanted to until I took it off, put the finishing touches on, and then glued and bolted it under the support. So if I, if I really wanted to get R2 on his feet, to save basically to save me some workspace area then, then that's something I could do so that's about it for that video just a 
quick showing that I am still progressing on some of the other parts other than the body which is just taking me forever because I keep finding things that I need to work on before I can um, paint it or even do the final sanding of the primer. It's still got its final fairly thick coat of primer that needs to be completely sanded down um, probably with 220 first and then with 400 grit to get it ready to paint and then painted so um, yeah that's it for this video two videos out today